Today's class is called Soul Food for Mind and Body. Soul Food. Everybody loves soul food, especially Judah, for mind and body. All right. We got a couple of brothers in here who are chefs, who grew up with parents that knew how to throw down. And we love us some soul food. Let me get a picture of that real quick. Soul food. Just Google that. Soul food. I don't know why the hell they call it soul food. Because I ain't doing nothing for your soul. Just your taste buds. Satisfying the lust of the mouth. The lust of the tongue. Because they ain't doing nothing. Ain't diminishing any calories. All, it, all it's doing is high blood pressure. Possible heart disease in the future. Let's get a big picture. Look at that thing. You got to close the doors, man. Judah might start jumping up and down. What's that right there? What is that? That's pork ribs, right? You got the pork ribs, the macaroni and cheese. Look at that thing, right? The collard greens. Any more? Anything I'm missing? Come on, Judah, speak to me. It's uh, cornbread. There we go. You see, you hear Judah. You know that's all Judah, right? You know that's all Judah. That ain't Levi, Issachar, nobody. Candy, Benjamin. Candy. It's all Judah right there. They love the soul food. Look at that. What is that? Candy the eggs. fried, what is that? Tilapia? Catfish. Ugh. The yams. I like candied yams, so I can't, I can't talk. The yams. You got the beans. What else? Am I missing something? Black what, happened to the, what happened to the grits? Grits? Ain't no grits? That's in the morning. No grits? That's in the hey, morning. I'm from New York, and I'm Levi, so what the hell do I know? Um... I like me some grits, though, in the morning. I like grits. I like grits. But all of that was slave food. Y'all know that, right? Yes, sir. Especially the grits. You said cabbage. Cabbage is healthy, though. Cabbage is healthy. But they put... How they put what? They put fat back in it, though. They put fat back in the cabbage. Look at that. What the hell? What is the point? <laughs> the thing is healthy. It's healthy. Then you throw fat back. Fat back, you said? <laughs> yeah, fat back. That's you throw oh, fat back. What is that? What is know. fat that's back? That, that's that pork. That's that swan. Pork. Lard? Yeah. So you... Huh? It's a piece of fat from, from off of the what? What animal? Bro, Judah got issues, bro. <laughs> it's like everything on the menu is just straight heartburn special. <laughs> that's all it is. Heartburn special, man. That's what you should call it. It's crazy. Fat back on cabbage. So it's like a fraction that cancels out. The thing was healthy. You throw fat back on it. Now it's not healthy. Right, right. So this is basically the food that our people have, that our people in captivity have uh, been accustomed to. All right. And then you, th you wash it back with the, with the uh, diabetes in a cup. That's what I call it. Right. With the fruit punch, the Kool-Aid. Right. Sweet as hell. <laughs> Sweet as hell, just sugar. You might as well just take water and just throw sugar in there. That's all it is. And it's unhealthy for our people. But we have a thing to satisfy our taste buds. All right, let's open up with Genesis 111. And no, this class is not me advocating a raw vegetarian diet or pescatarian or watertarian. Okay, you have some of y'all just want to drink water for the rest of your life. Okay, look, listen, everything in life is a balance, all right? We have to be careful. Too much excess of any one thing is no good. But we have to do better as a nation of people with what we eat, okay? Especially if we want to, you know, have a long life, Lord willing, you know, the Most High grant us that. If we have kids, you want to grow old with your kids, with your grandkids, we got to be careful. Nobody should be running around eating fat back, just chewing on fat back like it's gum. All right? We got to be very careful of that. Okay? With everything, there's a balance. All right? Let's get Genesis, the first chapter. And let's start at verse 1 first. The book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created... That's where the name Bereshith comes from in the Hebrew. Bereshith comes from the word, the beginning. Beginning. That's why Genesis is the first book. Because it's talking about the beginning of time. The beginning of creation. Come on. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. And the earth was 
was without form and void, mm -hmm. and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 11. Verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself mm -hmm. upon the earth. And it was so. So the Most High gave a commandment. He said, let there be the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit. Okay? After his kind, meaning the apple tree is going to bring forth apples, not oranges. Now, now Esau, what he's doing, he's mixing everything up with his experiments and his GMOs and he's polluting everything. All right? Turning everything upside down. Because at one point, right? Everything on the earth was in its proper course. Everything was right side up. Now it's upside down. But the Most High is raising up the Israelites right before the eyes of the other nations to turn everything right side up once again. And get me verse 29. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, mm -hmm. and every tree in the which is the fruit of of a tree mm -hmm. yielding seed to you it shall be for meat you hear that so what is god telling us right there what was the first dietary law instituted on this earth soldier elio pass him the mic read, read it again for him read it again genesis 1 verse 29 and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for meat. What is he saying? Well, it, it, it's actually saying. It, it's, it's saying that the seeds that we, we that were that everybody was eating plants. back. Then. Very good. All right. This is the origin of us eating just vegetables fruits from the ground, herbs, okay, and so forth. There was no eating animals, flesh. When did that happen? When did the eating of animals happen? So, um, Officer Yaku. Uh, Genesis 9 and 3, come, when we came off of uh, the uh, ark. Let's read that real quick. We're going to come back to Genesis chapter 1, but now let's get Genesis 9 and 3. The book of Genesis, chapter 9 and verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. So now the Most High is saying, look, now every moving thing shall be meat for you. But in the beginning, at first, it was not so. Okay? But, of course, we know sin came into the world and things changed. So now the Most High is saying, you know what? Every moving thing shall be meat for you. Come on. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. But flesh with the life thereof. Because the life is in the blood. Come on. Which is the blood thereof uh -huh. shall ye not eat. All right. So don't get anything that's um, raw or half well done. You can still see the blood. The Most High says not to do that. Okay. So that's the original Leviticus 11 in the beginning. All right. Let's go back to chapter 1 verse 29 again. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. So not only were we eating just the herbs, but also the animals. Okay? And that's a cut to those Egyptologists that ask, well, it's impossible for uh, Noah, Noah's Ark story to exist because how did he get all those animals on the boat? They would have ate each other. The lions would have ran through everything. The hyenas would have ran through everything. No, that's not so because there was a spirit upon the animals in the beginning to only eat what? The herbs and trees okay the same thing he commanded us to eat he told the animals to eat the same thing all right let's get um psalms 104 right so the most high actually before you get psalms 104 find me that in baruch 
where the Most High gave everything unto Jacob. I believe that's Baruch 3.31, right? Verse 36? All right, let's get that. We got it? Yes, sir. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. He hath found out all the way of knowledge mm -hmm. and hath given it unto Jacob, his servant. And prior to Jacob having all the way of knowledge, who had all the way of knowledge? Prior to Jacob having it. Who had it? Adam had it. Adam had it. Adam had all the way of knowledge. That's why Adam was what? Made a God upon the earth. That's why Adam was made a God upon the earth. Okay? Um, so the Most High gave us all the ways of knowledge, right? Let's get Psalms 104, verse 14. So the herbs were used for healing and nourishment. Healing and nourishment. Come on, Psalms 104 and verse 14. The book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 14. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. So who's speaking right here in the book of Psalms? In this particular Psalm. Who? David, all right? So what do you think David got that from? David got it from his forefathers. All right, the knowledge of what to eat, the knowledge of herbs and so forth was passed down from generation to generation. And who do you think David taught? David taught Solomon. All right, read that again. Psalms 104, verse 14. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So the herb and the plants were food out of the earth for us to eat. Okay, get me Sirach. Get me Sirach 38 and 4. Okay, that's Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 38 and verse 4. The book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. So just in case you didn't believe what David said, even though David was the anointed of God, the Most High is saying it right here. He's saying the Lord has what? Created medicines out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he that is wise will not abhor them. He, what makes us wise? What makes us wise? The what? The laws of God. The words of God, right? And in the word of God in Genesis chapter 1, the Most High said, look, the herbs of the field, that's good for you. Eat that. But a lot of us, a lot of us, what we'll tend to do is we'll tend to neglect that. We'll tend to neglect what we're reading in Sirach chapter 38, verse 4. And that's why we're all stricken with all these diseases and we don't know how to get rid of it. The first sign of an illness, what do you do? You run to the AMA. You run to the doctors. And the most I did say honor the physician. However, however, especially in this state, I'm starting to see that it's like a, it's like a, not a monopoly. What should I say? It's almost like a game. The job is to keep you sick, keep coming back. Because the more you, the more visits you have, the more they get paid. That's why holistic medicine is frowned upon. That's why in the year 2017, I believe it was, over 40 to 50 holistic um, uh, uh, practitioners were popping up dead in the state of Florida. Okay? That's when with Dr. CB, I heard of him, right? In the early, what, early 90s, late 80s, he put out a, um, an ad in the newspaper that he could uh, cure AIDS. Guess what? They took him to court for that. Who took him to court? The AMA. But they lost because they didn't investigate him. They didn't investigate what he did. They said, come to court with two people that you so-called claim. You know, Esau was laughing him to scorn. Oh, this nigga right here. What? He cured, he cured AIDS, a disease that we created? Hell nah. All right, come to court. Instead of bringing two people, he brought around 40 people. He flooded the whole courtroom. And he had proof from doctors, two different doctors. He sent each client to two different doctors. One doctor um, diagnosing them with the illness and another doctor saying that they were cured. Blew Esau's mind away. They had to throw the case out. They had to throw the case out. And it's all from herbs, natural um, healing, okay? You want to eat the herbs, you want to use it as a, 
uh, prevention. Don't wait until you get a disease and now you want to jump to herbs. And that's foolishness. Of course, you got to go to the doctor. But you want to eat it. You want to try to implement it into your daily lifestyle, okay, as a prevention so you don't have to worry about a cure later. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. All right. You got brothers at MOV trying to do uh, mountain climbers, but their belly is touching the floor. You might as well call it uh, um, the belly floor wipers or something. It's crazy. I'm talking about like the gut is out. I mean, that thing looks crazy, man. You got to change the name. Can't even call it mountain climbers no more. All right. Read Sirach 38 and 4 again. Come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 38, and verse 4. The Lord hath created medicine out of the earth, mm -hmm. and he that is wise will not abhor them. You hear that? He that is wise will not abhor it. Okay, that's going into those bitter herbs, the things that we hate. Why? Because it's, uh, it's, we've been conditioned to eat what satisfies us. What is that hormone? What is that hormone? Any doctors or nurses in the crowd, y'all could tell me. What is that hormone again? The feel good? Is it called dopamine? That's dopamine? The, the so we, we, we'll, we'll eat that, and in a sense, we'll eat whatever will um, um, ignite those hormones. So basically, we only eat what tastes good. And half of the stuff that tastes good ain't really good for us. But that spinach, that kale, and stuff like that, it tastes, it, I'll be the first to tell you, that thing don't taste good to me. But I eat it anyway. I just block it out. I just tough it out like it is what it is. You know? And these things, all, these things God says we're not supposed to abhor it. Okay, because a lot of medicines from the earth, what do we do? We ingest it. Okay, we eat it. Give me Second Ezra chapter 9. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 23. Like I said before, this is not me advocating a raw vegetarian diet, pescatarian. You can continue to eat meat and chicken. Just don't overindulge and don't be simple. All right, 2nd Ezra 9, verse 23. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, if thou wilt seize yet seven days more. So what's going on in this story for you studying, brothers? I know we got some scholars in the, in the, uh, in the classroom today, right? Everybody passed their tests, right? Not. But what is Ezra talking about? Brother right there. State your name for me. Shalom. Brother Killian. Brother Killian. Uh, what's happening in this is that Ezra has been fasting and mm -hmm. uh, visions are being revealed to him as he continues to fast. All right. So the Most High, is, the Most High commanded Ez Ezra through which angel? What uh, angel? Yohanatan. Uriel. Uriel. All right. Write that down, brothers. So if it comes up on a test, you're not lost. You're not lost. All right? All right, so Uriel commanded Ezra to fast. Because when we fast, it brings us closer to the Most High. And all of that stuff is spiritual. I don't got the answer to that question. But the Most High always commands us to fast to get closer to him. All right? Come on, read. Nevertheless, if thou wilt cease, yet say, but thou shalt not fast in them. But go into a field of flowers where no house is and eat only the flowers of the field. Taste no flesh. Drink no wine. But eat flowers only. Mm -hmm. And pray unto the highest continually. So, so the angel gave him a commandment now. He said, okay, now you, you're going to eat only flowers for what? Was it seven days? He told him seven days, right? Yes, sir. For seven more days. Okay, read. And pray unto the highest continually. Then will I come and talk with thee. Then will I come and talk with thee. Okay, so Ezra, guess what? Ezra had to eat the herbs. And ain't nothing wrong with eating the herbs. In Sirach 38 and 4, it said what? Don't abhor it. Do not abhor it. Do not abhor it. Was that verse 26? No, sir. Okay, remember in Daniel, what, what did he ask for? Remember Daniel? Officer Yaqub. Is there a mic for him? They have it? All right, just, just speak out loud. Which was just vegetables. And we know Daniel was a, a, a wise man, right? Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times we frown upon that thing. 
All right. And we really think that that um, ideology or that thought pattern of eating vegetables, raw vegan, every time we hear those terms, we think that's coming from Esau. No, that was us originally. That was us. That was us. OK. Uh, was that verse 26? Read. Verse 26. So I went into the field, which is called a Darth, mm -hmm. like as he commanded me. And there I sat in the flowers and did eat of the herbs of the field and the meat of the same. Me. The meat of the same is making references to the flower of the field. And Ezra said, guess what? He was he was satisfied by that. OK, as long as you're not starving of hunger. OK, he was satisfied of that. Give me wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. We're going to read verse 17 to 20. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. We're going to read 17 to 20. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 17. For he hath given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely, to know how the world was made. Now, who gave, who gave Solomon his knowledge? How do you think Solomon got some of this knowledge? Huh? Officer Shema. King, King David, his father. King David. King David. Okay, come on. To know how the world was made mm -hmm. and the operation of the elements, mm -hmm. the beginning, ending, and the midst of the times, mm -hmm. the alterations of the turning of the sun mm -hmm. and the change of seasons, mm -hmm. the circuits of years, and the positions of stars, the natures of living creatures, and the... The furies of wild beasts, uh -huh. the violence of winds, and the reasonings of men. Come on. The, 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 ver the diversities of plants. The diversities of plants. And the what? And the virtues of roots. And the virtues of roots. Okay? It was taught to him. Not only did the Most High, of course, increase Solomon's knowledge as time passed by, but from his youth, he was taught the diversities of plants. And the virtues of roots, the benefits of those plants, the benefits of those herbs. Where did we just read about that? How do we know King David knew that? Where did we just read? Let's see who's writing down the notes. Soldier Kasha. Psalms 104 and 14. Let's read that again, just in case you forgot. For those of you who did not write it, who have, uh, uh, how do you call it, photographic memory, but when you take the test, you get a 20 Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Come on. Let's go. The book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 14. Mm -hmm. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, and herb for the service of man. And herbs for the service of men. So that knowledge was passed down from father to son. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and verse 20. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 20. The natures of living creatures and the furies of wild beasts, the violence of winds and the reasonings of men, mm -hmm. the diversities of plants and the virtues of roots. And that was passed down to Solomon. And guess what? Solomon had that knowledge. All right. Give me one quick second. Go ahead. Talk. Let me know. Say something. Yeah. The, the mic check. Yeah. Go back to Sirach 38 real quick. Just in terms of uh, just another part of your diet, just as I was reading through it. Read verse 4 and 5. The book of Sirach, chapter 38, verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he, he that is well will not hoard them. He that is what? Is wise will not abhor them. What? Was not the water made sweet with wood? Was not the what? Water made sweet with wood. The water was made sweet. Not the Kool-Aid or the tea. Or the, those things are good, but in moderation. The bulk of your diet and your drinking should be what the Lord made, which was water. Thank you. Read on. That the, that the virtue thereof might be known. You see that? The Lord said it's virtuous. Water is virtuous, which is, I forget, whatever the percentage is, 75% of what your body is made up is water. Read on. And he hath given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous works. Let's see what the skill is. Read. Which such thought he healed. Now, nah, read it again. Which such doth he no, read it again. With such doth he heal men, 
and taketh away their pains. With the water, the roots, the diversities of plants, the medicines that are created out of the earth. That's what the Lord created those things for. And the water, drink water, more water. And look, there's nothing wrong with, uh, of course you got to drink water. Um, but there's nothing wrong with drinking uh, fruit juices and so forth. The best thing to do, what I would recommend, um, is go to maybe a farmer's market, buy your own fruit, and make your own juice. If you don't want to do that, because maybe you're, you know, you're too busy or whatever the case may be, try to go to like an organic store if you can and get 100% juice. If you turn that thing around and it says 11% juice, something is wrong. What's all the other ingredients? Those added preservatives and chemicals, uh, C4319. What the hell is a C4319? That's so you're getting all these ulcers, you're getting um, um, acid reflex and all these things going on. We must take care of ourselves. We gotta take better care of ourselves. Give me that image that you got. Show you an example. And what Cap is talking about is called, an, uh, what is it, infused water, where you put your fruits and stuff in it. Yeah, or you could just get a, uh, um, a juicer. So I got this made, all right? That right there is watermelon, ginger, and pineapple. All right, you could look up the benefits of your own, okay? For you brothers, uh, I mean, I'm gonna bring it up. For the brothers in here that are struggling in, in that department below the abdominal area, guess what? The green part of the watermelon gives you Viagra benefits. I ain't want to bring it up, but hey, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be raw with, with Israel. Okay, it makes you strong. The green part of the watermelon, not the sweet one that we love, that Esau always joking us about. Every time you see a a, a, a picture of a Negro, he's eating a watermelon. All right, why did they say? Because we're always having babies. That's why they always show uh, those. Um, how do you call those figures? The carrot. How do you call them? Yeah, that word. They always spitting out the seeds because they saying we always popping out seeds left and right. Why right? the green part of the watermelon? next on top of the skin of the watermelon, has a Viagra benefit. You could look it up. I looked it up a long time ago. All right, so you could do things like this. Make your own juices. So you're not drinking 11% juice from the local supermarket. Meanwhile, in Edomite neighborhoods and so forth, they get 100% organic juice. All right, go down to the farmer's market, get your own fruits, vegetables, and make your own juice, okay? Um... All right, you can take that off the screen. Get me Jeremiah 8, verse 22. Okay, let's get back to the herbs. Back to the herbs and the plants, which we abhor. Well, we love some fried chicken. Fried chicken and ribs and collard greens and macaroni. And what? And you said water cornbread? Hold it. <laughs> Hot water cornbread. Yeah, he had the accent. He had the accent, man. I, I still don't know what you said. You said hot, hot water cornbread. All right. Water. That's that New York, right? Hot water cornbread. All right. More power to you, man. Hot water cornbread. Jeremiah 8, verse 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 22. Mm. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is Gilead. There, Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? So what is, what is this talking about? What is Jeremiah going into? Somebody give me a brief history, Officer Emmanuel, with Jeremiah. What did Jeremiah prophesy about? Give me a, 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 a brief synopsis on the life of Jeremiah. Sure. So Jeremiah was a prophet. That was, he was made a prophet from the youthful age. And uh, he's... His mission was to teach the southern kingdom, even northern kingdom. When you go to Jer uh, when you go to some part of uh, Jeremiah chapter three, but it's mostly not uh, southern kingdom. He was teaching about uh, the destruction that's going to come from Babylon, mm -hmm. and they didn't pay attention to him. They didn't pay attention. So all through the time prior to Babylon, he, he the Lord even made him to put on um, to put on a yoke and move around and present himself to the king to let him understand the significance or the similitude of what Israel is about to go into, which is the southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. But they didn't pay attention to it. 
So when he's talking about that physician part, he's not talking about the physician of like doctors. Mm. He's talking about physician of healing with the word. Yes, yeah. it's a metaphor, absolutely. Mm. And the bomb is what? The bomb is was the medicine. Medicine, yes. That replaces yes. the word herb or mm. medicine. Yeah. All right? And um, who did Israel run to? Who did we run to for, for succor? Egypt. Egypt. And mm. God said not to do that. Yeah. So because we did that, the Most High punished us more. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, who dwelt in Gilead? Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. Who dwelt in Gilead? Gilead. Where was Gilead? Anybody knows the geography? That's why it's good to have uh, those map atlases and so forth when studying or reading the Bible. Always have a Zondervan, a who's who, and one of those maps. Officer Emmanuel again. Shalom. So when you look at the map, at the upper parts, at the northern, northeastern parts, uh, you have the, tr uh, the, the tribe of Gad, Reuben, and half of Manasseh. Very good. And why did they call it half of Manasseh? Because the other half are in the other side of the river. The other side of what river? Uh, Jordan. Very good. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. Perfect. All right. The other half was on the other side. The other half of the tribe of Manasseh was on the other side of the Jordan River. And in Thursdays, Thursday's class, right? You, we explained that when we used to read through the, the chapters, okay? For those of you who don't know, that's why it was called the half-tribe of Manasseh because the other half lived on the opposite side of the Jordan River. So Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh lived around Gilead, okay? And the Most High always spoke about the bomb in Gilead, which was a herb, which was a medicine. That's why today, predominantly, when you look at any native American Indian culture, they're big on what? They're big on herbs. That's something that they retained. It was always in their spirit. When you look at Reuben and Gad, okay, I'm not too sure about, about Manasseh, but Reuben and Gad are big on herbs. Natural healing. Natural healing. Get me Jeremiah 46 and 11. Jeremiah... 46 and 11. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 46, verse 11. Go up into Gilead and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt. Mm -hmm. In vain shalt thou use many, med many medicines. You hear that? So it's a metaphor. The Most High is not talking about actual physical healing. It's talking about spiritual right there. But... There's always two sides to the scriptures as we read in Job. Why is he using that similitude or metaphor? The Most High is letting you know that throughout Gilead, there was a lot of bomb. There was a lot of medicines for the earth. All right? So we can't be ignorant of things like this. That's why I told you, brothers, y'all got to study. Y'all got to study. Got to study. All right? Um, get me um, Genesis 37 and verse 25. Was that all of 11? No, sir. Oh, no. Go, go ahead. Go back. Jeremiah 46 and 11. Finish that and then get me Genesis 37. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 46 and verse 11. Go up into Gilead and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt. In vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. Okay, now get me Genesis. You said 37? 37 verse 25. The book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 25. And they sat down to eat bread and lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites. Arabs. Came from Gilead. Came from the opposite side of the Jordan. Come on. With their camels mm -hmm. bringing spicery. Bearing, bearing. Oh, excuse me. Bearing spicery and balm and myrrh. Balm and myrrh. So that herb, that balm right there is making reference to the herbs. Come on. Going to carry it down to Egypt. Going to carry it down to Egypt. So I just wanted to show you that there was herbs in that landmass right there. Now get me the article that I sent you, brother. All right. Say bomb of Gilead. Go down. Can everybody see this? Can everybody see this? All right, can you blow it up just a little bit?
All right. Uh, Officer Lemuel, can you read? So on top of it, they have the, I guess, the botanist. Am I pronouncing that right? The botanist is, is a person that studies plants, right? A botanist? All right. So they have the actual names of the, of the, um, the, the medicines and herbs and plants and stuff like that. Read that right there. Is then a, oh, although a handful of different plants today share a common name, balm of Gilead, the identity of the original healing herb of Gilead remains a mystery. Ma Grieve, in a modern herbal 1931, asserts that it was a species of comophora, small thorny trees of Africa and Asia that yield myrrh, and a, an aromatic oleoresin, oleoresin mm -hmm. traditionally used to treat treat digestive, respiratory, and reproductive disorders. So this bomb that we're reading about was used to treat digestive, digestive, for those of you who have problems with your digestive system, the ulcer brothers, the acid reflex brothers, the brothers that can't stop farting. You too, women, y'all go through the same thing. This is just not the brothers, okay? We all have had digestive problems in the past. Our forefathers used this particular herb for this, respiratory, that would include what? Asthma, any kind of cardiovascular illnesses, okay? They even said, uh, I was reading a book and it said the, um, the natives of this land, they were so fast when Esau used to come after them, the conquistadors and everybody else, um, they were like deers, the way they used to run. And it said the reason being is because they ate a lot of, um, uh, it's called chia seeds. Mm. And what they found that, those seeds help your cardiovascular system, okay? It's like they never got tired. They was able to sprint up mountains and bounce all over the place with, like, no rest. It was nothing for them, okay? Read. As well as to make incense and perfume. Scholars, however, contend that although the bomb was a product of the mountainous region of ancient Palestine... That's Israel. ...and an important article of trade there... No plant growing there today could produce such a substance. Because we're not there. You got the fake Amalek, the fake Jews, they are the Amalekites, the Jewish people in the land. And there's a spiritual connection between the spiritual people, which is us, and that land. So all of these things that were there before is not going to sprout back up until we go back into that land. Wake that brother up with the glasses. Wake up. Go put some water on your face if you have to. No sleeping in here. No sleeping at all. All right? Um, read that again. Come on. Scholars, however, contend that although the bomb was a product of the mountainous region of ancient Palestine and an important article of trade there, mm -hmm. no plant growing there today could produce such a substance. That's when we went there. It was like a dust. It was straight dust land. A lot of the trees are imported. All right. Why? Because the real Israelites are not there. Come on. Whatever the identity of the first bomb of Gilead, the common name has remained popular over the centuries. Here are four species from four different families, three trees and a herbaceous perennial with little in common, save an aromatic scent and the name Balm of Gilead. So go down. Just, we're just going to review some of them real quick. Abies balsumia mm -hmm. is an evergreen tree of the pine family. All right. Jump down to where it says tea made. Tea made from the needles has been used to treat colds and asthma. Canada balsam and oleoresin mm -hmm. gathered from blisters in the park has, has been used to relieve the pain of hemorrhoids, burns, and sores. You see what it was used for? And these are, this is the knowledge that our forefathers had, which has been removed from us. But now we're going back to that. There's books now. Now we can read. The Negro's allowed to read. There's books. There's one right here. What is the name of this book? The Complete Book of Herbs and Spices by Sarah Garland, right here, all right? And there's many other books. You don't have to get this one in particular. There's many other books, okay? So this bomb that we're reading about was used for hemorrhoids, all right? Y'all know what that is. Y'all don't want to go through that. Mess around in your house, man, looking like a baboon, all right? The hemorrhoids ain't no joke, okay? I got a, a, a cousin, an older cousin who suffers from that. Every time he go use the bathroom, his wife got to go in there after he's done with a plastic gloves and Vaseline on her hands or some other kind of lube. Ugh, it's crazy. 
It's crazy. We suffer as a people, man. We suffer. Okay, read. Come on. Some people are allergic to the resin, however. Native Americans used it to seal the seeds. There we go again. Native Americans. We read that Gad dwelt where? In Gilead. Read. Used it to seal the seams of their birch bark canoes. Mm -hmm. And scientists used it to mount specimens on microscopic slides. Go down. Let's uh, press continue reading. Uh, Read that right there. Cedronilla. Cedronilla canariensis. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a tender perennial, hardy to zone, hardy to zone nine mm-hmm. of the of the mint family, native to the Canary Islands. Of the mint, keep that word in mind. Of the mint family, native to the Canary Islands. Come on. It's also called Canary Bomb. Canary Bomb. Canary herb. All right. Uh, jump down to the other one. Liquid Dambar. Uh, liquid Ambar Oreen Tall Is mm-hmm. is a deciduous tree or large shrub of the witch hazel family with deeply lobed leaves and spiny, woody round fruits about an inch in diameter. Although it reaches only 20 feet tall in cultivation, it may grow as tall as 90 feet in the wild. Mm-hmm. Native to Turkey, this tree is also called Turkish or Oriental sweet gum for the gummy resin obtained from its bark. Go down. Get me Populus. Let's get the next one. Um, Populus candicans can, uh, is a fast-growing, hard, uh, hardy, deciduous tree of the willow family with aromatic, triangular, dark leaves that are whitish, whitish underneath. Jump down to where it says traditionally. Traditionally, the sticky winter buds were boiled to extract the resin, Mm -hmm. which was then mixed with lard and used as a solve for cuts and burns. Uh An an, uh, an alcohol uh, tincture of the resin was used to treat toothache and diarrhea, and a bud tea was taken for coughs. Like willows, poplars contain aspirin-like compounds that are effective in reducing fever, pain, and inflammation. The dried buds are used in pot bur- potpourri. In potpourri. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. So now let's go over some herbs that are in the Bible besides the, this bomb that we've been reading about. Okay. That is going to be good for our health. Um, okay. Let's start with you have myrrh. We read it said myrrh and aloes. Let's get that. Let's go to John 19 and 39. And I'll read the benefit of each plant. Matter of fact, as I call them out, go to image and just pull it up for those who don't know how it looks like. So type in aloe. Go to Google. Type in aloe while we read John 19, verse 31. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 31. 39, I'm sorry. 39. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes. All right. So came to Jesus by night and bought a mixture of myrrh and aloes. Okay. So that's right. That's what it is right there. Okay. What they do, they open it up and they use that gel like substance, which it creates from the inside. The aloe vera plant has been used for thousands of years in ancient times. It was used to embalm the dead as well as for perfume. It also has a lengthy history of use topically for skin complaint, compliance, including wounds, irritations, and burns, and internally for constipation. That's why there's some places you can get aloe juice, aloe vera juice, all right? It's good for constipation for you brothers and sisters who are battling that constipation. You can mix your juices with aloe vera, okay? Um, Today, aloe is still commonly used to treat burns, including sunburns, heel rashes, moisturizes the skin, and so forth. Preliminary research has also shown that aloe may help to lower blood sugar in type 2 diabetics and decrease the effects of liver damage caused by alcohol. The reason I'm showing you showing you this is don't think all of these things are Esau because they got it from us originally. We're reading it right now in the Bible. Read it again. Read it again. The word aloe did not just pop up now. That's but, been a word that's been around for thousands of years. Okay? And we understood the virtue of roots, the virtue of plants. 
All right, come on. Then took they the, excuse me, 39. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Okay, you see? So you read it right there. Now, let's go to Matthew 23 and 23. You're going to type in anise, A-N-I-S-E. I might be pronouncing that wrong. A-N-I-S-E. Mm -hmm. Type that in. Go to images. Blow it up so people can see. Sisters, take notes. Take notes. Married sisters, try to get some of these um, different herbs in your household. Season your foods with it. All right? Just if you want to do a raw vegetable diet for a day or whatever, add some seasoning to it. It don't got to taste like death, you know? But, let, yeah, death in a pot. All right, that's what some of us love eating, man. All right, anything to clog up our arteries, that's what we like. That's what we love. All right, so that's Anise right there. Let's read about it. The Matthew 23, verse 23. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. So Christ is speaking, okay, our Lord and Savior, the King of kings. Who is he talking to? The scribes and Pharisees. Come on. For ye paid tithe. Of Pay what? Tithe. Now let's see if it's talking about money. Okay, there's another cut to these pen. This is the New Testament. Come on. Of mint. Of what? Of mint. We, we read that earlier. Mint. Those mint leaves. Okay, those bitter herbs. Okay. Then you have other mint leaves like peppermint leaves and so forth. Come on. And anise. And what? Anise. We're looking at it right now. They paid tithes with this. They didn't, they didn't drop down shekels. It wasn't shekels. It wasn't money. Okay, it was always about crops. It was always about herbs. Okay, come on. And cumin. And what? Cumin. What is cumin? What is cumin? Brothers, I know Hezekiah knows, so go ahead. You can answer. Officer Hezekiah. Uh, cumin is a common seasoning used in, uh, it's a car, but it's a, it's a, Man, it's, it's good for a lot of things, but it tastes good. Since okay. Yeah. All right. Let's pull that up. Let's pull that up. Okay. It has a lot of health benefits, brother, brothers. Okay. Let's get the image. It's right there. A whole bunch of them right there. Okay. You have turmeric. Turmeric's another one. That's very good. All right. So that's cumin seed right there. Guess what? That's not a new thing on the earth because of Esau, because Esau said it. No. Our forefathers knew about this thing. We're reading about it right here. We're reading about it right here. Okay? And the cumin seed, you can get black seed oil. How many of you guys are heard of black seed oil? All right? Just beware Esau. He got a lot of fake black seed oil online. The best bet is to get it shipped from the east. That's what I do. Okay, this is it right here. Black seed oil. All right? Black seed oil right here. And it's made from the cumin, the cumin or cumin plant, however you pronounce it. All right? Antifungal, antibacterial, anti uh anti everything. All right? This thing is real good for you. It's real good for you. Okay? And this is something that our forefathers knew. Read Matthew 23 and 23 again. Book of Matthew. 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have committed the weighty, weighty matters of the law. So the point that I wanted out of that was to show you that those things existed, the mint, the anise, and the cumin. Okay? Now, uh, all parts of the anise plants were used during biblical times. The seeds, leaves, and stem were used to cool high temperatures, as well as for other medicinal purposes. Today, anise can be used to help with digestion and can be used as an anti-flatulence -flatu agent. Let's pull that up. Let's type that in. I never heard of that before. F-L-A-T-U-L-E-N-C-E. -E. Fletchel, Fletchelance. Fletcher, la, 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 la. Yeah, let's, let's pull up the definition, please. Definition. That is farting? Damn, see? 
<laughs> See y'all brothers, y'all farting with brothers that be farting constantly. We all fart, but if you farting constantly, something is wrong. Okay, you need some anise. You need a pound of anise a day. How about that? Okay? So it says, um, today anise can be used to help with digestions and can be used as an anti-farting agent. I'm just going to say that because I can't pronounce the words right. It's also used with some success for breastfeeding support, mothers, breastfeeding support and parasites. As an anti-spasmodic, anise can be helpful for coughs, bronchitis, and COPD. I don't know what COPD is. Dr. Emanuel, can you please help us out? What is that? I don't know what the hell a COPD is. Uh, COPD is a chronic, it means chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. All right. So it, mostly from people who smoke for more than 20 years of lifetime. Or, okay. people, or some people can be born lacking an enzyme that can make them develop COPD. And it, it, it doesn't go away. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what it is. He explained it. The doctor has spoken. Okay. All right. Um, let's get... Oh, we already read Genesis 37. Actually, let's get it again. Genesis 37, verse 25. Actually, no, we went, I'm sorry. Skip that. We already, we already touched that herb. Skip that. All right? So I hope y'all writing this down. Now let's go to the bitter herbs. The bitter herbs. We just had that. Join the time of Passover. Type in bitter herbs. There's different kinds. There's horseradish. There's a whole bunch. You could Google it. Let's go to Exodus 12 and 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 8. Go to images. There's a whole bunch. Look right there. Look at the... Hold on. Go back. I'm sorry. Go back. Look at that. You have mugwort, uh, valerian. You could have just stayed on the... But go down. Go down. Go down. All right. You have valerian, right? Down. Chamomile. We know what that is. That's good to relax you too, to help you if you have sleeping problems. Peppermint, which I mentioned before, the mint, right? That's considered a bitter herb. Yarrow. Yarrow. Hold on. All right. Is you could use it for essential oils, flavonoids, minerals such as potassium, digestion issues. Go down. You have common sorrow, right? Y'all heard of that from Benjamin, right? right? The bitter herb sorrow should always be used fresh in recipes. Okay, it has uh, vitamins uh, and mineral, it helps vitamins and mineral deficiencies can be used to reduce fever. Pregnant women use it a lot down. Chicory. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Okay, stop right there. It can be used as an uh, alternative use to coffee. So you won't get addicted to caffeine. Okay? Um, it helps with kidney, gallstone issues, jaundice, mild fevers, promotes a mild laxative. Okay, mild laxative. Wormwood. We heard of wormwood a lot, especially in the book of Revelations. But what is it? It's an actual herb. And it's bitter. Okay? And it can be used for memory problems. Uh, memory problems. It activates the acet acetylcholine receptors in the brain to help limit the decline of memory function in Alzheimer's patients. Then you have the neem tree. All right, the neem tree right here. Okay, it's an antibacterial, anti-inflammatory disinfectant, diuretic, okay? And you have, uh, what's this? Gentian or Gentian. Um, this one right here is used for skin problems, liver ailments, fever, hypertension, digestive problems, uh, uh, rheumatism, and gout, all right? You have Angelica, all right? Y'all could visit this site on your own. Let's go back. Okay, you got a whole bunch of bitter herbs. Let's read that. Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter 
herbs. And with bitter herbs. So this is something that we consumed. Okay? We didn't just have bitter herbs, brothers and sisters, on Passover night. Okay? We had bitter herbs as part of our diet. Okay? Um, one second. Uh, okay. Type in cassia. C-A-S-S-I-A. Give me Ezekiel, the 27th chapter, verse 19. Ezekiel 27, verse 19. Okay, and a lot of the anointing oils that we read about, when you, you can order the essential oils and actually put it in, like, water. Not too much, though. Maybe, like, a tiny little drop. Sometimes you could put it in your bath water. Like, what I used to do, I used to take the um, frankincense and myrrh, you know, after I take a shower and I want to take a quick bath and you want that, that aroma to stay on you, drop it in your bath water. You know, just small droplets, especially if it's potent, if it's, uh, if it's real potent and strong. All right. Uh, here we go. We have the Cassia Torah powder. All right. This is how it looks. Sisters, add this to your repertoire in your kitchen. All right. You brothers, too. Okay. So the cassia oil was popular, used as anointing oil, right? Um, it had um, arom aromatic, aromatic properties quite similar to cinnamon, all right? Today, cassia is used in natural hair care, coloring, conditionings, and so forth, all right? Let's read that. Ezekiel, uh, what did I tell you? 30, 27, verse 19. Ezekiel, chapter 27, verse 19. Dan also and Javan, going to and fro, occupied in their fairs. Bright iron, cassia, and calamus were in thy market. You hear that? So we had those things. Those things were there. Okay? This is not a new thing. These are not new herbs that sprung up upon the earth. All right? Come out of this. Get me cinnamon. We all know cinnamon. How do you get rid of that bottom part? Just accept cookies. Go down. Go ahead. Read that. Let me well. Cinnamon is a favorite household spice and has been used throughout the world for centuries. Once, once traded as currency, this spice has a pleasant flavor and warm smell, which has made it popular in cooking, particularly in baking and curries. You hear that? Baking and, baking and curries. This was a thing of the East. A lot of East Indians, Persians, and I don't even want to refer to them because guess what? We were using this and we're going to show you in the scriptures, okay? Now, you see the part where it says once traded as currency? Keep that in mind. It was once traded as currency. It was an expensive thing to have cinnamon, okay? Go down. Let's get the benefits. Scroll down, go down. I want the benefits. Hold on, go down, go, hold on, hold on. Hold on, go back up, go back up. Go down, go down. I know there's health benefits somewhere. Right here. Okay, it helps treat blood pressure, blood sugar, type 2 diabetes, digestive discomfort. All right, and it also tells you how to store and use it. Okay? Um, let's get uh, Exodus 30 and verse 23. Exodus 30 and verse 23. Remember, it was traded as currency. This thing was on the same level as gold, the same level as shekels. Why? Is it because it was just a, uh, there, there was a reason behind it. Why was this thing traded as currency? Because of the health benefits behind it. Because of the health benefits behind it. And it was probably a rare thing at that time to find. All right, let's go. Come the on. book of Exodus chapter 30 and verse 23. Take thou also unto thee principal spices. Principal uh, spices. Principles, chief spices. Come on. Of pure myrrh, mm -hmm. 500 shekels. 500 and, shekels of pure myrrh. Come on. And of sweet cinnamon. And of what? Sweet cinnamon. And of sweet cinnamon. Come on. Have so much. Mm -hmm. Even 250 shekels. 250 shekels of cinnamon. That's why we just read in that article it was traded as what? As currency, we're reading it right now. Come on. And of sweet calamus. Mm -hmm. And of sweet calamus. 250 shekels. 250 shekels. So the cinnamon, right? The bark where the oil 
um, comes from was traditionally collected for anointing oil as well as perfume. Now it can be used to treat yeast infections and uh, upset stomachs and so forth. Okay, get me Isaiah 28 and 25. Let's go back to the cumin thing again. Isaiah 28 and 25. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 25. Mm -hmm. When he hath made pain the face thereof, plain the face thereof, doth he not cast abroad the, fe the fetches and scatter the cumin? And scatter the cumin, come on. And, ha and cast in the principal wheat and the appointed barley and the rye in their place? So right there, what is it talking about? The scattering of the harvest. The most I was talking about the harvest. But the point that I wanted to pull was the word cumin. It's in there. Okay? We always had access to those things. All right? And the cumin is right here. Right? Um, the Israelites took cumin seeds, dried them up, and they flavored them in their food. Okay? Now it says that cumin seeds, now today's research says that cumin seeds, you can go back and pull it up as I'm talking about it. Uh, type in cumin seeds, C-U-M-I-N. The cumin, cumin seeds um, contain a substance called cumin aldehyde, all right, that may be useful in fighting diabetes. A study published in 2017 demonstrates that black cumin, that's this once again, you know what? Let me open it up for you. It contains, it contains anti-cancer phytochemical known as thymocunin. Thymocunin. And thymocunin may be considered as a future drug in cancer treatment. Esau is just finding out about this. Mean, we, meanwhile, our forefathers had access to this all this time. Okay? Why? Because we knew the what? The virtue of the plants, the virtue of the herbs. Okay? Um, let's see. What else we want to go into? Uh, uno momento. Frankincense. Let's get Matthew 2 and 11. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. So what was treasurable? What was inside of these gifts? Come on. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. Because those things were precious at that time. Okay. But we want to concentrate on the frankincense. All right. Frankincense is used as an anti-inflammatory. It's not only used, brothers and sisters, for fragrance. You can use this as uh, the essential oil as an anti-inflammatory. Now, don't go to Elam and get the, the fragranced one that you put on your body and put that in your food. You're going to get sick. You've got to get the essential frankincense oil, the essential. Okay? Let's get Numbers 11, verse 5. Garlic. Give me a picture of garlic. That's the essential oil right there. Very good. Now, give me garlic. Garlic, garlic, garlic. We all know what garlic is. We hate the way it smells on our breath. But guess what? It's good. Put it in your food. What I used to do, what I still do now, I'm not going to say used to, take uh, a clove of garlic and mix it with uh, raw um, honey. All right? Or mucca honey, I think they call it. And I take a, a, um, a teaspoon before bed. All right. Numbers 11, verse 5. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, and verse 5. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. You hear that? And the garlic. We ate those things in Egypt. Okay? Just because we was in captivity don't mean we was eating bad. We was not eating lard and fried chicken and grits and what else? Hot water, hot water what? Hot water cornbread. <laughs> Look what we was eating in Egypt when we was in captivity. Remember, the chains came off eventually, just like here in America. Remember, we had the liberty to what? Go to and fro into Goshen and back and forth. So guess what? Some of us was eating good. That's when we got into the wilderness, they started murmuring. That's when they was like, we were thinking about the cucumbers, the garlic, and this and that. Okay? 
So what are the benefits of the garlic? What are the benefits of garlic? All right, used to boost the immune system, prevent heart disease and high cholesterols. And it fights against the, um, it, it helps against the formation of cancer within the body. Okay, Psalms 51 and 7. Let's get his sop. I hope y'all writing this down. All right. Especially to you photographic memory brothers. Then when it's time to take the test, I'm seeing 20s and 30s. Write it down. Okay. Psalms 51, verse 7. Hyssop. The book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 7. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Mm -hmm. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. So a lot of times we read these things and we read right past it. I didn't know what hyssop would. I had to look it up. Okay. And this is hyssop right here. Look at that. Look at that. Everything that we need right here on the earth. So hyssop was a sweet smelling plant from the mint family. All right. It was used in ceremonies amongst our people. OK. Um, burning hyssop typically meant an inner cleansing. All right. In a research study published in this time, 2003, um, the use of hyssop in food uh, helps with um, abnormal high blood pressure, um, high blood sugar, I mean, high blood sugar levels in the body. Hyssop is also known for being an ex expectorant and improving respiratory related problems such as asthma, coughs, and bronchitis. I believe an expectorant is what stops the mucus, right? The, when you have a productive cough. So when they'll tell you, it'll, it'll say a cough suppressant, but also an expectorant. An expectorant is what stops the mucus, right? Hey, now you say, you say, right, I'm, I'm fumbling. I ain't go to medical school. Here, yeah, give him the mic. A cough expectorant, he just breaks off the plugs al along the bronchi, breaks it off so he can, so your, f something is like, looks like a broom called cilia will move it up and come to your throat so you can cough it up. So you can cough it up, mm -hmm. all right? So guess what? That was found in hyssop. Now, Esau's finding about this now. Hey, we could use hyssop for this, but we've been new about that. So why not use these things? Remember, it says he found out all the way of knowledge gave to who? Israel. We got to apply these things, all right? Um, what else? What else? What else? Give me the mustard. 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 We like putting that on our franks, all right? Give me Luke 17, verse 6. Let's see, is that, is that scriptural? Is that word in there? The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 6. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycam sycamine tree. S sycamore. Is it sycamore? This one's sycamine. In, okay, I'm not in looking Luke. at it. All right, go ahead. Sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall and it should obey you. So Christ was given a parable with the mustard seed, right? Okay, don't you think don't you think they took those seeds and ate them and planted them and used them for their benefit? Absolutely. Uh, today the mustard seed has been studied for its possible anti-cancer properties. Okay. Um, it helps against bladder cancer development and progression. All right, that's the mustard seed right there, the smallest of seeds, but can become a big tree. All right, let's get myrrh, myrrh. We read past that earlier. Let's go back to myrrh. Type in myrrh. Get me Genesis 43 and 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 43 and verse 11. And their father Israel said unto them, if it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels mm. and carry down the man, a, a man, down the man, a present, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, spices and myrrh. Come on. Nuts and almonds, nuts and almonds. All right. All right. So that was used back then. What are the benefits? Antiparasitic, antifungal, antibacterial benefits. Okay, and you can use them also um, in, um, there's these little machines where you could put like diffused stuff in there and it gives like a, a vapor, you can use that as well. 
Okay, last but not least, saffron. That's the essential oil right there of myrrh, all right? Saffron, S-A-F-F-R-O-N, S-A-F-F-R-O-N. There's also saffron rice. Y'all ever seen that, the saffron rice from India? Okay. When you go to these uh, East Indian restaurants, they have some of these things on their menu. Do they smell like death? Yes. But how many times, how many times have you seen an overweight Elamite? Rare. Very rare. All right? You'll barely see them in McDonald's and this and that. They love, I'm telling you, back in New York, what I used to do, one of my clients, he used to come. He used to come to me in the morning, right? Because y'all knew I, I used to do the training and so forth. And he, I think he was my 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. client. And this dude always smelt like curry. You're like, I can't help it. I need curry. I'm like, you eating curry rice for breakfast? No, curry cereal. <laughs> curry everything. But guess what? It's healthy. It's healthy. All right? Curry cereal, curry crab, curry chicken, curry goat, curry rice, curry potatoes, curry boiled eggs. Everything got curry in it. That damn smell come out of their pores. But guess what? They healthy as hell, though. They healthy as hell. All right? Give me a Song of Solomon, 4, verse 14. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices. You hear that? God called those things the chief spices. So we got to use those to our benefits. What is the benefit? Benefit is... It in, uh, today, recent studies have indicated possible health benefits, including, including cancer-inhibiting properties, specifically for breast cancer, antidepressant effects, all right? That's for you depressed sisters in here, you depressed brothers. Take a bowl of saffron and just stuff it in your mouth, okay? So you can stop being depressed. Some of you are depressed, man. Some of you are sick with depression, man. Crazy, all right? Antidepressant effects... And it promotes a feeling of fullness for mildly overweight individuals. That for you brothers that can't control your eating. You overindulge in everything. So with your food, right, you should have a small, at least take maybe two teaspoons or a tablespoon of saffron. That'll make you feel like you're stuffed. You don't have to literally stuff your faces with a whole bison, a whole cow. All right? You don't got to do that. Okay? Get me uh, Philippians. 319. We're going to wrap it up. Philippians 319. Come on. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let's go. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 19. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Whose what? Whose God is their belly. We can't make food our God. Yes, certain foods taste good, but don't overindulge. Don't overindulge. Remember what the scripture says, a little is suffice to a man what? Well what? Well nourished. Don't overindulge. You just had a plate of food. An hour later, you eating again. That's a problem. There's an there's a emotional and spiritual problem going on to where you can't control yourself. I could go the whole day and eat one, one plate of food. All right. But sometimes I might find myself overindulging. I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite, you know, but we all have to what? We all have to practice and do better and apply what God says. Read that again. Whose end is destruction, mm -hmm. whose God is their belly, whose God is our belly. OK, give me Deuteronomy eight and three and Matthew four, one to four. Give me Deuteronomy eight and three first. OK, so we can't be a glutton. A glutton is when you overindulge. Y'all know that, right? A lot of times we hear that word, we just think it applies to food. It applies to anything that's in excess. But with today's topic, we're going to stick with food. And I ain't talking about the soul food that we seen earlier. This is the real soul food, what we're reading about right here. All right? Come on. Deuteronomy 8 and 3. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, uh -huh. which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee known that man doth not live by bread alone. Uh-huh, but by what? But by every word 
that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth men live. What? That was Matthew 4, right? No, Deuteronomy. That was Deuteronomy. 8. Give me Matthew 4 now, 1 to 4. The book right. of So cut down the portions. Maybe if you stop eating so much, you won't feel tired and lazy when you open up the Bible. And you'll, st you'll spend more time studying so you won't be getting 20s and 10s on tests. Okay? Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said. You see that? Everything is food. Because food can be a what? A temptation. Food can be a temptation. So Satan told him, why don't you turn these stones into bread? Come on. But he answered and said, mm -hmm. it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. You hear that? Cut him with the scriptures. Men don't live by bread alone, but by what? But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so far we've been reading nothing but precepts on the different herbs and plants and how to eat, all right? And we ain't done yet. Give me Job 23, verse 12. Job 23, verse 12. So like I said, I'm not advocating a vegetarian diet or a raw vegan diet. I'm saying there should be a balance. Because I know you carnivores. I know you brothers love your steak. You like your, your demonico cut, your ribeye with the bone in and the bone out, your bison. In Atlanta, I had, I had me some bison. But in portions, you got to know how to, all right, I got the little meat right there. I'm going to have my vegetables. And then I, that should suffice. That should be able to hold you down. Not an hour later, you're stuffing your face with cornflakes. Then you fart in in the bed. Your wife is like, mm, what does that smell? He's like, mm, what is that smell? I don't know. What it, it smells good to me, honey. No. Come on. You had a brother. You had a, no, not a brother. You had a sister reach out to me from another congregation, international congregation. She's like, Captain Isaac, I gotta talk to you. I'm like, what's going on, sister? Uh, my husband. So all sorts of thoughts come into my, my head when she, when, the, way she, the way she was speaking. I was like, sister, what's wrong? What's going on? She's like, my husband changed. I was like, what? What are you talking about, change? What the hell do you mean, change? What do you mean, change? He changed, he's, he's not the same man anymore. I'm like, what happened? He turned into the sp a spaghetti. He changed into a spaghetti. I'm like, well, what? A spaghetti? Yeah, he has spaghetti syndrome. Spaghetti syndrome? What the hell is that? Y'all heard of that? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm like, no, sister, you got to explain. She said his turned into a spaghetti. You know when you boil a spaghetti? What happens to when you boil a spaghetti? It's a, it's a limp noodle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. She's like, yeah, we, we've been married. We've been married, and we only did it like four times. We've been married for almost a year, two years, and we only did it four times because he has spaghetti syndrome. That's a problem. It could be the diet. It could be a few things. Either the diet is real crap, and you got to change your diet to improve your cardio, your, uh, your, your circulation to help you with that department, or you're watching porn. And you're comparing your spouse to what you see on the screen. Straight, simple. I got to speak to them like this because some of y'all, y'all lost like, all right? So stop with the porn, okay? Brothers, if you have that issue, guess what? Get on these herbs, start um, fixing your diet, stop, start implementing exercise in your diet so you won't get hit with the spaghetti syndrome, okay? Y'all brothers understand? All right, y'all newly brother, y'all newly married brothers understand? Yes, sir. Job 23 and 12. The Come book on. Of, the book of Job, chapter 23 and verse 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Mm -hmm. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You hear that? So Job meditated on God's law more than he ate. Some of you eat more than you study, and it's evident. Okay. Get me Sirach 31. We're going to close it out soon. Sirach 31. Read uh, verse 19, please. The book of Sirach, chapter 31, and verse 19. Mm -hmm. A very little is sufficient 
for a man well nurtured. You hear that? Very little is sufficient for a man well nourished. Jump back up to verse 12. Read, you're going to read verse 12 to 24. We're going to read it straight through. Come on. Read fast. Verse 12. If thou sit in a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it, and say not, there is much meat on it. You hear that, brothers? If you sit at a table, don't be like, damn, that's a, oh, man, that ribeye right there, that chicken right there. Oh, good Lord. Then at the Passover, at the Passover, there was a brother. I ain't going to say his name. This brother was sitting out chilling. Bread came. This brother, I lie to you not. I don't know how he did it. There was enough bread on the table for everybody at the table to break bread. Turn around and look. There was only like two pieces of bread left. Meanwhile, there was about 12 brothers at the table. Brother, what did you do? This brother, I, this brother reached for the bread with four fingers like this. Bam, 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 bam. He picked up four pieces of bread with four fingers. And I didn't know what to tell the brother. I was just stunned. I never seen it. It's like he had adhesive on his finger. It's just like, pow, 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 pow. Four pieces of bread. <sighs> like, yo, brother, this is crazy. Read that again. Read that scripture again, man. Verse 12. The book of Sirach, chapter. Come on. Where 31, verse 12. 31, verse 12. If thou sit at a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it. Mm -hmm. And say not, there is much meat on it. Mm -hmm. remember, that the, remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. Come on. And what is created more wicked than an eye. You know why it says a wicked eye? Because it's gluttony. You at the table with four people and there's enough food for everybody, but you ate enough food for two people. Okay, that's a selfish spirit. Come on. Therefore, it weepeth upon every occasion. Mm -hmm. Stretch not thy hand, whether so ever it looketh, mm -hmm. and trust it not with him into the dish. Come on. Judge of thy neighbor by thyself, uh -huh. and be discreet in every point. Verse 14. Well, 16, sir. This is Sirach 31, right? Yes, sir. Verse 16. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Verse 16. Eat as it becometh a man mm -hmm. those things which are set before thee, and devour not. Lest thou be hated. And guess what? That will make you to, not ha deep hatred, but you'll be like, damn, bro, you a, you a greedy nooker. Damn, bro, you, you ate everything. We got four brothers here. You ate enough for two people. Not only two brothers could eat. Now other brothers are, are left hungry. All you brothers at home with your wives. You know what I'm saying? You have a nice family dinner. You finish eating. And it should be, and you'll think it's enough. 30 minutes later, you eating, eating stuff in your face and... You know when brothers eat and then the milk and then everything's still running down? Then you're like, damn. In your mind, you're like, damn, that's a greed. It's, it's, it's not attractive. It's a turnoff. Okay? It's not cool at all. That's what we got to watch ourselves. Watch how we eat and how we conduct ourselves. Come on. Leave off first for manner's sake mm -hmm. and be not insatiable lest thou offend. You hear that? And you're going to offend. That's why verse 16 said, lest thou be hated. Leave off first for manner's sake. Don't be the first one at the table to reach. Okay, come on. When thou sittest among many, reach not thy hand out first of Th all. What I do, I wait. Even if something look good. You know how the times you just sit in there and you're like, damn, in your mind you're like, all right, who's going to be the first one to start eating so I don't got to go first and look greedy? You know what I'm saying? If that's the case, just say, all right, brothers, y'all ready to eat? Sisters, y'all ready to eat? Don't just food come, bam. You know what I'm saying? You ever see that before? All right, come on. When... A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, uh -huh. and he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. That's what we read earlier, that term that, I, what is it? Flatuous, the farting brothers and sisters, okay? It says he's fetch, he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed, okay? There was a brother that used to be with us, right? Pull up tomahawk steak, tomahawk steak. That thing tastes good. That thing tastes good. As a huge steak. Pull up the big one. I want the full size one, the one that looks like a damn horse. Tomahawk steak. All right. There's actually ones that are much bigger than that. This is small. There we go. That one right there is good. So we had a tomahawk steak. I lie to you not. This tomahawk steak was this big. This big. Okay. And we had a group of brothers sitting there. So, you know, we amongst brothers. We was like, you know what? Let's see who could finish all of this. This was just a friendly thing, friendly competition. I ate half. I saved the next half. This was at Tabernacles. I saved the next half for the morning for breakfast. Got up, seasoned it, threw it on the grill. One brother finished the whole thing before everybody. 
And the biggest brother amongst us couldn't even finish it. We're just looking at him like, and you know he stuffed, you know he was full. Ain't no way he finished that thing. Next morning, I said, bro. He was like, yo, oh my God. I was like, what happened? He's like, yo, I couldn't sleep. Why you couldn't sleep? Yo, I threw up. He's like, I threw up. I had stomach pains. I was like, yeah, because you ate, you forced yourself to eat all of this because of a, a, a competition. You wanted to win. You wanted to prove something. Now you threw up. Now you have pains at night. Crazy. All right, read that again. A very little mm -hmm. is sufficient for a man well nurtured, mm -hmm. and he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. Come on. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. So now you wonder why you have nightmares at night. You're tossing and turning. You're farting. Because you're not moderately eating, brothers, sisters. Come on. He riseth early, and his wits are with him. Because you had a good night's sleep. Come on. But the pain of watching and choler and pangs of the belly mm -hmm. are with a unstable man. Unsatiable. The unsatiable man. Unsatiable man, right, has pangs of the belly. That can, that can include digestive problems, ulcers, acid reflux. Why? Because you're not watching what you're eating. You're overindulging. And that is a sign of gluttony. Come on. And if thou hast been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and thou shalt have rest. So if you're forced to eat, it says forced to eat. Nobody here is forced to eat. All right? If you're forced to eat, arise, go forth and vomit, and thou shalt have rest. Come on. My son, hear me, and despise me not. And at the last thou shalt find, as I told thee, in all thy works be quick. So shall there no sickness come unto thee. You hear what God is telling us? Listen to the Most High, and you, it will abstain you from having sickness. Of course, if it be of the Lord's will, you're going to get sick. But you can prevent it by eating right. Come on. Come on. Who, verse 23. Come on. Whoso is liberal of his meat. Liberal of his meat. Liberal of his meat. What does that mean? Liberal of his meat. Officer Yakub. Uh, it means he's not insatiable. He he uh he only eats, you know, what's what's necessary. Okay, go ahead. Men shall speak well of him because it's going to show. It's going to show. Just like that sister who she has a a, a big presence online somewhere. Forgot the name. She's like in her seventies. It's something crazy. She like in her seventies. She looks like she's thirty. But her husband, who's a big meat eater, and there's nothing wrong with eating meat. But her husband, who's a big meat eater. He looked like he's 60. She looked like she's 30. That's a problem. Because it transpires, it goes over into the bedroom. And it could cause problems. Okay, come on. Whoso is liberal of his meat, men shall speak well of him. Uh -huh. And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. Type in Annette Larkin. Look, up, look her up. Keep reading. But against him that is a niggard of his meat... The whole city shall murmur. You hear that? People are going to murmur because you're a niggard with your meat. Come on. And the testimonies of his niggardness. And your niggardness. The testimonies mean people are speaking about you. Like, yo, that brother's huge. And people do that. One time I had a flight. Forgot where I was going. But it was from, I had to fly from Dallas to one of the states and in the states overseas. And, oh, man, I'll tell you it was the worst. I get on the plane, just to get there was a headache. Then when I get on the plane, I think I walk past my seat. Did I turn? No, I didn't walk past my seat, I'm bugging. I had a carry on, and they wanted me to go get off the plane and check it in. I didn't want to do that. All the overhead compartments was taken. So I went to the back and the flight attendant, he squeezed it behind somebody's seat for me. So I didn't see who was sitting next to me. I walked back to my seat, I literally stopped. I had to hesitate, I looked at my seat, I looked at everybody else. Everybody's looking at They gave me that. This, that's like that. See, surprise, right? It was smiling like. I just shook my head. I was like, and I, I was like, oh, man, you had two M&Ms sitting next to me. All right? Ain't nothing wrong with being big. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. But purchase two seats when you fly. Okay? Purchase two seats. Man, I had to sit in the middle. The sister was here. It was a sister here and a brother here. Bro, I was mad as hell. I was like this. 
the whole time I was like this. And the brother, the brother, the brother was just, he was cool. He had his uh, uh, iPad out, whatever. He was just looking around, looking at me like, you know, he'll move and he'll look at me to see if there's a reaction. I'm like, yo, in my mind, I was cursing him out. Crazy, man. Go ahead. Read that again. But against him that is a niggard of his meat, the whole city shall murmur. Uh -huh. And the testimonies of his niggardness shall not be doubted of. And shall not be doubted of. Get me um, Sirach 37, 29 to 31. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 29. Mm -hmm. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. And also sweet breads and cakes. And so don't be unsatiable. You can have, you can have a piece. I'll give you an example. So y'all don't say, well, uh, Captain Isaac might be a hypocrite. I came in. Guess what? This was on the table. I'm assuming this is for me, right? I'm probably going to have one cookie this whole month. Some brothers have it every day. Oreos and milk. What are Oreos and milk, brothers? Raise your hand. Don't front. Don't front. I know y'all the, the the soft chips ahoy. I, I know all about all of that. All right, brothers depressed. They break out the whole chips ahoy bag with the with the milk right there. Okay, don't. And then you'll finish. The, you'll run through the whole row. The thing what it comes with three or four rows. You run through the whole four three rows, and you only leave two in there. You might as well finish it. All right, read that again. Come on. Come on. Where, 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 I'm lost my place. Sirach 37, 29. 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, mm -hmm. nor too greedy upon meats. Mm -hmm. For excess of meats bringeth sickness. You hear that? For excess. So like I said, you don't have to cut meat out of your diet, but limit it. You don't have to cut chicken and all these things. Limit it. Limit it. Excess brings forth what? Sickness. Mm -hmm. And surfeiting will turn into choler. And surfeiting means what? What does surfeiting mean? Brother in the back. What's your name again? Brother Amos? Ebbit. Ebbit Amos. All right. Uh, surfeiting is like uh, overeating. Uh. Yes, it's an excess. Okay, just another word for excess. Will turn into choler, meaning hate. Overeating, people start to hate you. You might start to hate yourself. Hey, overeating, you do hate yourself. Because why you want to overeat yourself and end up in the grave? You know? So get me Deut Deuteronomy 28.61. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Read down to verse 31. We missed something. But surfeiting have many perished. By surfeiting. By surfeiting have many perished. You hear that? By surfeiting, many people have passed away. Come on. But he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. So these are the words of God. He's telling you how to eat. He's telling you what to eat. Telling you don't have an excess. Implement herbs and plants and vegetables and fruits into your diet. Okay? And by doing so, you're going to prolong your life. Get me Deuteronomy 28, 61. Last scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. You hear that? So you have diabetes, high blood pressure. A lot of times we use that for what? For uh, Hebrews 13 and 5, right? In conjunction. But there's other diseases there. Diabetes, high blood pressure, all these things that we don't read about in the Bible. But because of our malnourishment, we have those things now. Now the scripture says we're going to eat of, of our bread defiled, right? In Ezekiel. However, we still have options. There's still ways around that. There's no excuse. There's no excuse, all right? We can still try to promote a healthy lifestyle, thus saith the Lord. One more thing before I close it out. This right here is called the T1 male nourisher, okay? This was on Dr. CB's old website. Um, I had it. I had it for like four. I had this one bottle for like four years to tell you that I, I didn't use it. I use sometimes, but like I said, I really didn't need it. So for the brothers, uh, the brothers that are struggling in that department, you know, you don't have to raise your hand. I don't even want to know who you are, but you can fix the problem. Change your diet, get some herbs, all right, so you can last like an Israelite man is supposed to. All right? Y'all brothers understand? 
All right. I don't want to hear about no spaghetti syndrome. All right. All praises to the Most High. All right, we're going to close it out. We're going to watch the bishop's class. Shalom. Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.